Now, with the effects of climate change and global warming, it's a must to find viable options to reduce our carbon footprints. With that in mind, today I'm going to show you how technology and sustainability can come together and work hand in hand in my smart home, where we have installed solar panels that generate clean energy to a rainwater harvesting system that cuts down our water usage by 200%. Everything we've implemented helps make our home eco-friendly and efficient. So let's get started. Hello and welcome back to my channel and as part of my smart home journey series, this one focuses on reducing our impact on the environment and save us money at the end of the day. So first up, let's talk about these beauties my solar panels. Now these panels are the heart of my home's energy solution, converting sunlight into clean electricity. Not only are they reducing my carbon footprint, but they are also significantly cutting down my electricity bill. Now this system is super efficient, even on cloudy days, and I'm able to monitor everything in real time, which is amazing. However, to reap the benefits of using solar panels for our home, we had to ask ourselves basically these five questions. They were, did we want a off-grid or a on-grid system? Now, given with the home's location, it was clear that we wanted to have a on-grid system that was connected to the local grid. And we didn't want to have the overhead cost of owning and maintaining battery storage. So in Brazil, we do follow the net metering system where we are allowed to send the excess energy the panels generate to the local grid in exchange for credits which is in kilowatts, which will then reflect in our monthly electricity bill. Now, these credits can be consumed over a period of five years. So as of today, we have around 1.7 megawatt in credit since the system was installed. Then we asked ourselves, what is the best solar panel system? Now for this one, we knew we would receive a mixed bag of responses. And I also needed a system that would work with Home Assistant as well. Thankfully, a colleague of mine from work started a new business with solar panels. And once I came to know about it, I said to myself of oh, what better way of supporting his new venture. So he proposed a system that composed of Canadian solar panels connected to an AP system microinverter, which then uses the Zigbee protocol to connect and send data to its proprietary hub. And based on that information, which is a true fact actually, I then went and checked in Home Assistant if there was a add-on. And to my surprise, there was one. So eyes closed, I asked my friend to build a project for my home, which led us to the next question. How many solar panels would we need? Now to figure out about how many panels we needed for our home and also build a solar panel project, all we had to do was provide a list of all the appliances we'd be immediately using in our home, which would be the essentials, as well as to consider an electric vehicle and an electrical pool heater for future use. Based on that information, the project confirmed that we would need eight Canadian solar 660 watt panels, three AP system microinverters with all the necessary installation, structure, cables, and accessories. However, for our immediate use, we would move forward with six panels and two microinverters and allowing us to upgrade in the future. So once we had the project in our hand, we then knew on how much the solar system would cost. Now, with all the colleague discounts that was added, the entire system would cost us around 4,500 US dollars. And it included a system with a power of 3.96 kWp, an average monthly generation of 435 kilowatts, totaling approximately to 5.22 megawatts generated yearly, which represents an annual saving of approximately $800 in energy bill expenses. After reading all those numbers in the court, obviously we then asked on what would be the payback period. Based on the usage on the current installation panels, our payback period would be around five to six years. Well, only time will tell us. However, since the time we moved in from December 28, 2003, we've been paying the minimum electricity bill of 100 kilowatts as part of the net metering system. And anything consumed on top of that was deducted from the generated credit kilowatts. After I did my calculations, I think we have saved around $500 so we are almost there. Now with the solar panels generating clean energy, this is where the technology part kicks in. 
where I'm able to monitor in real time, either through the web interface or through the app, it gives me a clear overview of how much energy we've been producing on a daily, monthly, and yearly basis. Additionally, it also allows me to view and download summary reports as well as provides me with all of the environmental benefits we have achieved so far. And another cool feature is that I can play a timeline of how much each panel has generated for that day. But that's not it. Together with the power of Home Assistant, the data the solar panels are generating and the data generated by the Shelly 3M to measure electric consumption, I can easily consolidate view and navigate through the home energy dashboard where I can clearly see the home's consumption and production allowing me to truly understand our daily needs which is amazing and it was all set up effortlessly. But we didn't stop there. Generating energy and consolidating data is just one part of that equation. We also focused on minimizing consumption by using the smartness this home possesses. As I said in my previous video, our house was always positioned perfectly to take advantage of natural sunlight. So we've basically optimize the window placement to reduce the need for artificial lighting. Then we went ahead and installed energy efficient smart LED bulbs all over the house and I found this amazing home assistant add-on that I could apply the adaptive lighting feature to any smart LED bulb. Now this function allowed us to experience cooler color temperature during the day gradually transitioning to warmer colors at sunset until sunrise and once I added and configured that feature to the internal Xiaomi lighting fixtures the lights do come on when it's sunset but they also adjust just intelligently the brightness and color of the lights while still allowing for full manual control in the Apple Home app. I then partnered the smart switches with the smart sensors together with the power of automations where we can turn on and off lights for specific locations based on motion and when only necessary. Additionally, our blinds can also be automated. We can move them up and down using the Apple Home app based on the position on the sun as well as the time of the day. By doing this, during the day, we can reduce the heat that comes into the house as well as use less energy to cool it down. Next up is our swimming pool pumps. These can be turned on either through the Apple Home app or through the press of a button. Currently, I have an automation to turn on the pool pumps at a specific time and to turn it off after two hours of use. But I also added a condition to it. That is also to check the next hour's solar production. With that value, I input it and thanks to technology, I can then use that forecasted data to turn on the pool pumps automatically and consume clean energy, which is pretty cool and takes away the hassle of knowing when is the best time to turn them on. Now, with regards to our home appliances, besides the induction cooktop, microwave, the electrical oven, the dishwasher and washing machine, the rest of the appliances are class A products, meaning out of the box, they are energy efficient, they are smart IoT devices, as well as they can be automated as well. However, we keep the refrigerator at an optimal temperature between three to seven degrees, and we also use cold water programs on the washing machine, which are short cycles, but super efficient. Now, with regards to the dishwasher, we load them completely to maximize its use, which also re results in reduced water consumption. Now let's move on to the other side of sustainability, which is water conservation. Living in a country like Brazil, we get plenty of rain. So we installed two 1000 liter tanks to capture rainwater from the roof only. Why we installed two 1000 liter tanks? Well, it is to match up to the two freshwater 1000 liter tanks installed in the roof. Basically with the captured rainwater, we are currently using it to fill the swimming pools, irrigation, and cleaning the outside space, which reduces our dependency on the fresh water provided by the city, as well as reducing our water bills. So for a house of this size, our monthly water bill is $8, compared to my neighbors who pay around $50 or so. Now, the only things we didn't do is to connect the tanks to flush toilets, as well as reuse the water from the washing machines. Now, to be honest, we really didn't find any qualified company to do so. Now, with regards to technology, I am still executing a proof of concept 
to capture our freshwater consumption by using a sensor and an ESP board, but it's still a hit and miss to provide all that data into Home Assistant. And I also have an upcoming project to add proximity sensors to each of the rainwater tanks to report the water levels in them. I guess one baby step at a time. So there you have it. This is how technology and sustainability can work together to create a more eco-friendly, cost-effective smart home. We've managed to reduce our energy and water usage dramatically, which is not just good for the planet, but also good for our wallets, but while still enjoying the modern convenience. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on our home building journey and other exciting DIY smart home projects. Until the next time, my friends, cheers and happy automation.